<coughs> AWE stuff for uh, like season three, so we'll see. Welcome back to control. Just says investigate the sector the way to engulf the elevator. There was something there. Reaching for her. Trying to make her act. There was a distress call. Phaeton sensed a drowning man. A hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out. What? Okay, now I'm intrigued. I'm glad I I'm glad I did this last. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star. And the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle, trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away and made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man. A man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark. Not unlike the hostile resonance. Waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights winked back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator door slid shut with practice bravado. <coughs> so, if that's Alan Wake, does that mean Hello? he's... Anyone here? Yes, not. I am curious if that's Alan Wake. Is he narrating what Seems we're doing? Is he a lot more crowded than the rest of the bureau? <clears throat> so 
This because this is going to become like the Truman Show where he's literally dictating what we're doing, or is he just recording what's happening? Uh, I really need to check into the original Alan Wake games. I didn't know any better. I'd say this sort of thing was going to start bleeding into what's going on. Sounds like the investigation squad was looking into Trench after he started. This must have come after the hiss corrupted him. The guys looked at him and went, hmm, something's off. man locomotion so there's a tractor that can drive itself a lot of paperwork in this initial area Let's probably find out this. Hmm. Yeah. It's not working. Probably a loose power core somewhere. Yes, I could take. I could have taken the stairs, but what would be the fun in that? Hmm. Escape from where, though? I think you need to be a detective to work that bit out. The question is, what? Something's telling me this wasn't his. This is something else. Best. Just 
thing. Do we know each other? I feel... This feels familiar. I can't seem to... Uh, I've forgotten it. I'm sorry. I'm... My name is Ellen Wake. friend Tom. Tom Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. The diver. You, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An old terror like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. is happening that was alan wake the writer who went missing in that awe case i read about what's he doing here and thomas zane was with him the poet no wait th th he was a filmmaker i i always remember that wrong was he I'm confused. I feel that. You know the problem with having something tie into something like Alan Wake? You know, a game that already existed. You're not 100 You can never be 100% sure whether you need to know about what happened. I suppose that's what I'm doing tonight, researching Alan Wake, you know, well, not necessarily researching more. Looking at, looking at the walkthrough so I know what the story of Alan Wake was, in case it leads in to this one. Like I say, I don't know Alan Wake too well, so I'm going in blind for this. Doctor Emil Hartman, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Broke loose, killed everyone it could, lurking, roaming, waiting. A 
then something else came. A resonance. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Alright, wake. What's the next chapter? Dr. Emil Hartman was desperate. The Federal Bureau of Control had stolen his life's work. This was his last chance, his final experiment. What he'd been too scared to do before. Hartman dove into the lake, was taken, devoured by a hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Only an echo of him remained, fragmented impulses on autoplay, violent, bloodthirsty darkness in the driver's seat. Emerging from the lake, the thing was captured by the FBC, brought in, contained, studied. The thing broke loose, killed everyone it could. The FBC fell back and sealed the sector. The thing was alone in the dark, lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. Not darkness, but similar enough. A sound. A resonance. It shouldn't be a surprise. If there's one, why not another? The darkness inside the thing could have been immune, could have resisted, fought, could have been passed by, passed through with no effect. But it didn't and it wasn't. Maybe it had grown weaker over time, not aged. It was timeless, but weaker with no link to its source. A metamorphosis followed. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. All right, who's Hartman then? Those things just keep showing up. You know, sooner or later we're gonna have to be able to kill her, kill them or something. Blood indicates somebody didn't quite make it through the doors. Creepy, damp, and abandoned. Why did Wake want me to come here? Actually, here's a better question. If Wake's talking to us through the hotline, does that mean he's dead or is he just mind you, he's supposed to be a, he was supposed to be designated a prime candidate. And if uh, what I'm apparently hearing, apparently he has the capacity to bring his stories to life, so... That's not normal. That doesn't look like a house shift. No, this isn't a house I shift. Wanna know. <clears throat> oh, 
say not cleanse. Oh, in case you were in case I was concerned about not having people to fight. rather looking forward to going through an entire sector without having to actually fight people. You know, just off of a whole mystery about it. But no, it wouldn't be much of a video game if we didn't have people to fight. <laughs> Individuals and sanctions against health organizations, obstruction of bureau investigation. Whoa, looks like the house has gotten a little wild in here. Yeah, definitely not going that way. Okay. What is that? This darkness is blocking the door. So now I have to deal with an interdimensional noise and sentient shadows. Welcome to the world of Alan Wake. Actually, hang on, yeah, that is Alan Wake. That is very much an Alan Wake thing. Light burns it away, huh? Makes sense. I should have the thing that makes. Yeah. It's just mold. No idea if I was actually important to anything. It 
if it is, then I've officially if it <coughs> it is a side mission thing. I've officially cleared it before it props up. I'm just making sure. The third thing. The sound made darker, the darkness made louder. Hartman was stretched like a worm through time. The third thing was a monster. Now we crashed out of darkness toward Faden. So, is it, so it sounds like it's Hartman who I'm on a collision course with. The resonance carves its way through the thing that had been Hartman, vibrating, remolding. The sound changes the darkness, and the darkness changes the sound. They both changed what remained of Hartman. They all turned into something else. A third thing. The sound made darker. The darkness made louder. Hartman was stretched. Stretched as anyone when seen from out of time, like a worm through time. Almost an Ouroboros, a spiral, a maelstrom. The gravity well of a black hole, twisting inward, tightening, taking you deeper and deeper to the bottom, the heart, and through to the other side. The third thing said, when you hear this, you will know you're a new you. He said, we build you till nothing remains. He said, under the conceptual reality, behind this reality, you must want these ways to drag you away. He said, baby, 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 yeah, orange peel. The third thing was a monster. He'd tear apart any ordinary person crossing his path. Now we crashed out of darkness toward Faden. There was nothing ordinary about Faden. Again, questions. So many, so many questions. Is Alan Wake just narrating what's happening, or is he creating the story? If this is a man whose last game in him was all about him creating fiction, yeah, creating fiction that came to life, then. Is he bringing this to life? Surveillance methods are as follows. Fiber optic cameras slid under the individual room doors. Motion detectors in the lobby area. Trip wire triggering a flash camera across the main entrance. Even fingerprint powder on the front desk. The results are varying at best. Mostly just... inconclusive and unusable. The footage is corrupted. Sometimes even the equipment. So I don't know how exactly. I, uh... I think this place is making fun of me. 
That's the only explanation. I, I can hear them laughing and screaming behind the closed doors. I can hear the call bell going ding multiple times a day, but when I look, there's no one in there. I know I'm supposed to stay out of sight, but I've seen the doors closing just before I can catch even a glimpse of anyone or anything. They're messing with me, whoever they are. I think. Wait, shh. There's something. I gotta get this. I gotta get the cable out. Come on, you fiber optic fuck. Cooperate. Okay, there we go. I swear to God, I'm... What? Hello? Who's there? Oh, shit. I'm with the FBC. Move away from the door. I have a... Where's my... Is that recording still going? I think that's it. Why is there? Reminder, all employees are required to report their hours at the end of each month. The Federal Bureau of Control maintains that time is not subjective and hours passed on alternative planes cannot be claimed. Astral dives do not accumulate overtime compensation. Thank you for your attention. Delays caused by house shifts do not count towards overtime. <laughs> oh, for fuck's sake. Actually, hang on. I need a light source anyway, so let's see if I can't. I think that's what this job here is supposed to be for because there's no power to the door anyway. Oh, that's alarming. People are suddenly making altered items. My understanding of the darkness is fragmented, incomplete. This abyss, this void, it very much does not wish to be understood. If light symbolizes knowledge, then it stands to reason that darkness would equate to ignorance. By its very nature, it abhors comprehension. Of course, my own nature drives me to comprehend all. We are opposing forces. 
destined to collide. And given this conflict of natures, we know that the light of truth will burn away the darkness, both figuratively and literally. Any significant light source can be used as protection, even weaponry against this metaphysical gloom. And then there are the artists. I know for a fact that Tom, Wake, the Anderson brothers, and Lane all had some involvement with the darkness. The question is whether their uncanny ability to affect reality through their art beckons the darkness, or did their work perhaps even create it? With Wake now secure in my lodge, I expect I shall grow closer to learning the answers to these questions. Assuming he cooperates, which is proving quite the challenge. Well, perseverance is the foundation of knowledge. Speaking of, I must be off on my rounds. in this darkness is draining me. What is that? The power 